specifically because this is where the Lord wants us. And All right. Jesus talking to the people of His day, telling them that they are a light, talking to the believers, the followers. Amen. What got us started in this direction is that I had talked to you about Governor Romney's comment about the hurricane. He said, now's the time for all of us to make the difference that each one of us can make. Yes. Then I talked to Brother Lyle Helm, and he said that all his desire was to make a difference. I talked to our landlord several days ago now, and he said that he was convicted to help the hungry and to make a difference in some way that he could. All right. So we talked last Sunday about how you can make a difference. Right. And this might not mean a whole lot to you, but it does to me as a minister... Whenever you talk to people, usually when people want to talk to you, it's because they have problems, things that's going on, or they need something, and that's fine. But it's rare for whenever you talk to people, and their desire is to make a difference in any way that they can. Amen. Because, and it's rare because most people think they can't make a difference. Right. They think that they are insignificant uh -huh. as to the whole, the big picture, the, wow. the, the uh, as far as they know it. They can't make a difference. So to hear these men talk about making a difference stirred me up. And the Lord began to speak to me and said, each one of us can make a difference. Amen. And He took me to these Scriptures in Matthew, the fifth chapter. I'm not going to be as mobile as I usually am on Sunday morning, so you don't have to worry about me jumping a pew this morning. Right. Hallelujah. I'm going to do most of my preaching from back here. That's all right. Hallelujah. Go Matthew 5 and 14 says, Ye are the light uh -huh. of the world. Yeah. You are the light. Amen. of the world. Somebody take your finger, turn it around like this and point to yourself and say, I am the light of the world. That's what Jesus spoke. Amen? You. I know sometimes we like to say, well, let the pastor do it. Let the preacher do it. Send them to Brother Billy for prayer. Well, won't you pray for them? You're supposed to be the light of the world. Amen? While Jesus was here in bodily form, He was the light. When He left, Brother Tommy, He commissioned you, His followers, born-again believers, People that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, born again, you are supposed to be the light. Come on. How do you do this? You allow the light of Jesus Christ to shine through you. Amen. You allow Him to live through you. Yeah. Sister Cindy, you allow Him to love through you. Oh, Amen? Right. You allow more of Jesus in your life than you do more of self. That's the only way you're ever going to allow your light to shine the way that it needs to shine. It's less of me, Lord, and more of you. Amen? John the Baptist said, I must decrease that he may increase. Amen? That should be our prayer today. Yes. Not that we should be in the spotlight. Not that we should be top dog. But that he should be the sinner. And Tuesday night when we came in here, Brother Mike didn't even get to preach. Because as we begin to pray and worship the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord fell in here in such a way, Brother Sleaze, that you can't do anything else, Brother Dave, except get on your knees and bow before a holy God and worship Him and call out on His name and to lift Him up. Amen? Amen. And Brother Mike couldn't even preach. And I like that. I like that. Amen? I like it whenever the Lord moves in and takes over. Amen? This ain't my show. This all belongs to Him. It doesn't belong to me. Amen. I like it whenever He moves in. And I'm glad Amen. that I know how to step out of the way and let Him get in there and do things. Amen. Amen. And I appreciate Brother Mike because there's not a whole lot of preachers. Now, whether you like Brother Mike or not, that's between you and God. Yeah. But there's not a whole lot of preachers that I know will get out of the way and let God do that's what God wants brother. to do. That's, Amen. That's there's not a whole lot of preachers that would drive an hour and a half yeah. and then not preach. Right. Amen. I know a lot of them that if they drove that far, they would be determined. Right. I'm going to preach. I've got a message. I don't care how things are going. I'm going to preach. Yeah. But I appreciate the fact that Brother Mike got out of the way and let God have His way. Amen. Because we can go through a form. Right. Amen. But having a form of godliness and not the power that comes with it. Amen. Denying. Denying the power thereof. That's something else. Come on, brother. So we're talking about how we can make a difference. Yeah. As I was talking to our landlord, like I told you last Sunday, I said, one person cannot solve world hunger. Right. Amen. That's true. One person cannot do it all. Come on. But everybody can do something. Amen. Listen, we've sat on our pews long enough right. and said, let somebody else do it. Yeah. God's wanting you to do something. Yeah. God's calling for men and women in the day that we live in to make a difference. Yeah. Somebody that will stand out from the crowd. Right. Somebody that won't go along with the flow. Come on. Somebody that will swim against the tide. Right. 
Somebody that will stand in a backslidden generation Absolutely. and say, I'll dare to be different. Exactly. I'll dare to somebody that will go on the job right. and not act like every other Joe. Yeah. Somebody that will let their light shine regardless of the crowd that they're in. We've got a whole bunch of church people right. that when they come into church on Sunday morning, right. they'll let their light shine in. That's not the problem. The problem is, is whenever they're outside the church doors, when they're in their place of business, whenever they're working on the job, right. whenever they're at Walmart, whenever they're in the local restaurant, that's the place that you need to let your light shine the most. Amen. Yet too many times we hide it, we cover it up. Right. Maybe some people are ashamed. Right. Well, I got news for you, you better get out of that. Because he said, if you're ashamed of me Amen. before men, Amen. I'll be ashamed of you before my Father. Amen? It's time that we took our light out from under the bushel. It's time that we quit taking everything in stride and being so meek that we have no say-so over nothing. It's time that we quit falling for everything and stand for something in these last days. Right. Amen? That's the truth. It's time that we realize we can make a difference. Exactly. I don't tell you every Sunday morning and every Tuesday night as service closes to go outside those doors and be the light you're supposed to be because I think it's just some neat little slogan we can use. Oh. I tell you that because I believe it. Amen. I believe you can make a difference. Oh. I believe I can make a difference. If we'll allow Jesus to live through us, I believe we can make a difference. Absolutely. I'll go a step farther than that. I believe you do make a difference in people's lives, either for the good or for the bad, one way or the other. You can choose which one you're going to do. You're either going to influence people in a good way or you're going to influence people in a bad way. Amen? You are the light of the world. That's what Jesus said in Matthew, the third, the uh, fifth chapter, the 14th verse. He goes on to say, He says, You're the light of the world. Then He says, A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Why? Because a candle is meant to give light. And if you put it under something, if you cover it up, guess what happens to it? It's going to go out. Amen? Many people today got on fire for God, but decided to stick their, their candle under a bushel. And their candle has went out. Right. The flame, that's what's happened to the church. Come on. The church has decided that we're going to be more economical. Amen. We're going to get along with our Catholic brethren. Right. We're going to get along with our Muslim brethren. Yeah. We're going to get along with our whatever brethren that comes on, you know, whatever false religion that springs up today. There's a new one every day. Amen. Yeah. We're going to accept all of them. Oh, you are. Huh? Then you're going to be as lost as a ball in high weeds because Jesus said, You are the light. Right. Amen. Yeah. Let your light so shine before men so that they'll glorify your Father which is in heaven. i got news for you. If you're a devout Catholic, you are not my brother. If you're a devout Muslim, you are not my brother. There's only one way for you to be my brother, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And both of those religions don't come that way. Amen. Amen. Come on. Tell only me. through the blood. Right. Only. Say, Brother Billy, that's, that's narrow-minded. I can't help it. It's a narrow way. Absolutely. You only get to heaven through Jesus. Absolutely. You won't get there no other way. Amen. And it's our job to be a light to a lost and dying world. Yes, sir. It's our job to go outside these doors and treat everybody different right. than most than they are than they're usually treated. Yes. Amen. People you. expect you to get hateful with them whenever they cut you off in traffic. Right. People expect you to get mad when they take your parking spot at Walmart. People expect you to get mad when they mess up your order at a restaurant. Right. What they don't expect is for you to show them the love of Jesus. All right. See, that's when see the only thing that can expel or dispel uh, darkness is light. Yes. You shining more darkness into their darkness doesn't help anybody. Right. It doesn't help your witness. It certainly doesn't help their soul. Right. Amen. Come on. There is a right way and a wrong way to treat people. Mm -hmm. Well, Brother Billy, we're church people. Yeah, that's the people that needs to know it the most. Amen? Yeah. That's the people that there's a right way and a wrong way to treat people. Yeah. Here, I got, a new, I got a new doctrine to slap on you. How about doing to others as you would have them doing to you? Amen? How about treating others as you would have them treat you? Amen? How about loving others the way that you want them to love you? That's what Jesus is saying. Whenever he says, you are the light of the world, let your light so shine before men so that they will glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yeah. There's not but one Father that gets glorified whenever you act bad, and that's the Father of darkness. Come on, brother. But whenever you show the love of Jesus, whenever you make a difference, 
yes. in people's lives. Yes. And you can make a difference. Amen. You can make a difference today. Yes, sir. Oh, and you may think, well, you know, I might be able to make a difference in one person's life, or I might be able to, but it's not really big. It's not really anything. Well, it's big to the person that you make the difference for. Amen? Come on. Ask Elijah how important the widow woman was with her, her meal barrel and cruise of oil. Right. One little widow woman on. made the difference. Amen? Right. One little widow woman's faith. See, we need some common people that have an uncommon faith. Yeah. What was wrong with grandma? What was the difference with, with grandma in the church of today? Because grandma was an ordinary woman with an extraordinary faith in an, in an extraordinary God. Amen? That's what we need. We need people with an extraordinary faith yeah. today. Come on. We need ordinary people with an extraordinary faith in God. That's right. We need common people with an uncommon faith Amen. in God. We need people that will make a difference. Yes, sir. We need people that it doesn't come as a shock to your neighbor when they find out you're a Christian. Yeah. When they hear about it, they should say, Oh, that figures. Come on. I figured that already. <laughs> Amen. Praise the you Lord. can make a difference. One person, one light. Yes. We talked last week about if you were out somewhere in the darkness and your car <clears throat> broke down or you were lost. What a difference it would make if you looked around and you saw nothing but darkness. What a difference it would make is if, if you saw a light in the distance. Amen. Oh, there's a light. What are you going to do? But if you got any sense, you're going to start going toward the light. Yes, sir. Because you're in a place of darkness. A place where you need help. Yes. That's where we find the world today. Amen. That's where we find the church today. Come on. In darkness and in need of help. Right. They need a light. Amen. Brothers, please. Amen. Someone wrote a song some time ago. I can't think of the guy who wrote it. I don't think it was uh, James Payne. I think it might have been Laverne Tria. Or it might have been one of the Hensons. Anyway. The name of the song was I'm the Light, I think was the name of it. Talked about a man that walked up and said, can you give me a light? He's talking about it for a cigarette. Uh -huh. And oh, you talk about opening the door for a Christian. He said, I can give you a light. I can give you a light that'll change your life. All right. I can give you a light to where you don't have to have those cigarettes no more. Praise the Lord. You don't have to have that alcohol no more. You don't have to be the way you are anymore. Amen. The light that I can offer you today will change your life. The light that we have to offer, the answer that we have to offer today yes. is the answer. Yes. The world is dying of a disease, a sickness called sin. Amen. And we sit in our churches and on our pews and we sit on the antidote. Yes. Never telling them. Jesus is the place you need to go. Jesus is the one that you need to turn to. Amen. We're supposed to be the light. And one light makes a difference in a world of darkness. Yes, sir. On your job, one light makes a difference. Amen. Whenever they're in trouble and they're in need, they'll run to you for prayer because yes. they've seen your light. Amen. Whenever they're lost Amen. and undone, they'll run toward the light. Yes. We don't have enough lights shining today. That's right. We don't have enough people that are different. We don't have enough people that are separated enough. We don't have enough people that... Get under the burden and fast like grandma did. Come on. We don't have enough people to seek the face of God for what He can do in the lives of others. Yeah. We don't have enough people today riding the altar and saying, God, save the lost Amen. before it's eternally too late. That's what Jesus has commissioned us to do. That's right, you are the light. You are the light. You are the light of the world. Make a difference. Come on. And history is marked. We talked last week with men and women mm. who decided to make a difference. I told you last Sunday morning that Abraham Lincoln stood on the street corner in New Orleans and made this vow. Yeah. If I can do anything about he was watching a slave being sold, to, sold into slavery from one master to the other. Mm. He said, if I can do anything to stop that, if I'm ever in the power, ever have the power to stop that, I will. And he did. Amen. All because one man right. decided to make a difference. Right. One man decided to make a difference. Amen. Throughout the Bible, we find all kinds of men like that. Uh -huh. We find Noah, who God, if not for Noah, would have wiped us all off the face of the earth. Yeah, He would have wiped out humanity. True. Say, so, Brother Billy, you mean you believe Noah and the ark's the true story? Yes, you sir. better believe I do. Amen. Either this, either all of this is the truth or ain't none of it the truth. Amen? Wow. Noah! God looks down and finds Noah. Uh -huh. 
Right. And he found grace in the eyes of the Lord because he walked with God. Yes, sir. One man in the midst of a perverse generation can make a difference. Amen. We talked about Nehemiah. One man, read the book of Nehemiah, and you'll find out that one man caused the enemy to get really upset and nervous. Yeah. Because one man had came to seek the welfare of God's people. Right. Nehemiah chose to make a difference. King David, he wasn't king yet, he was just a lad, took some sandwiches to his brothers down there in the valley as they're facing Goliath. Mm -hmm. One boy decides, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Yeah. One boy defeats the giant. We need some people Amen. today that will choose to defeat the giant. Amen. We need some people today that will choose to get outside of the tent with their knees knocking together, scared to death of the devil, and take him on one-on-one. -on -one. Amen. Amen? We need some people today that when they walk into the room, the devil leaves. Amen? Amen. We need some people today that you, you are a torment to the devil. Right. The reason he tells you that you cannot make a difference is because he knows better. He knows that one man, one woman that gets concerned about the condition of the world and begins to seek the face of God can make a difference. He knows today that you can make a difference. Yes, sir. We talked about the disciples. Twelve common men. Twelve ordinary men. Oh, my, my, my. Twelve ordinary men with an extraordinary faith in the Son of God. And the book of Acts says that these men turn the world upside down. One man today can make a difference. James 5 and 16 tells us that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. You're not just praying. You're not just praying empty prayers today. God hears every prayer that you pray. Don't quit praying for your loved ones. I know sometimes, Sister Cindy, it seems like the harder you pray, the worse they get. Amen. 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 The harder you pray, the worse the situation Amen. seems to be. Don't give up. Hang on to the horns of the altar and continue to cry out because God hears your prayers. Amen. God hears your prayers. Thank you, Jesus. One man, one woman can make a difference today. Yes, sir. Ezekiel 22 and 30, the Bible says that God was seeking a man. He said, I sought a man yeah. among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap yeah. before me for the land. He was looking for one man. Come on. God's not interested in crowds today. It's not the way man is. Let me put it like that. He certainly wants everybody to get saved. He wants a big crowd to join that. Yes. But he's not interested in your mega church today. That doesn't impress him. Wow. You can have a whole church building full of lost people. Right. What impresses Him is people that want to do something to change the way that things are. People that don't want to take on the economical spirit and, and, and sing kumbaya with all the false religions of the world, but that will stand up in the midst of a lost and perverse generation and say, Jesus is the answer. Not a answer. Not one of the answers. Jesus is the answer. Yes, sir. He's looking for somebody that will make a difference. He still is. And I asked you last week, if he looked your way, uh -huh. would he find none or would he find someone that still cares enough to pray? Someone that still cares enough that they want to make a difference in a lost and dying yeah. world. Amen. If there's ever been a time that we need different people, we need them today. Yes, sir. If there's ever been a time that we need people to stand for the truth, we need it today. Amen. If there's ever, we can prove that by the election that just yes, took sir. place. Amen. Yes. There's no way he shouldn't have got elected the first time. He right. sure shouldn't have got elected the second time. Amen. 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 It shows you. I think it says more about the people than it does the candidate. Yes, Amen. It does. America's lost. Yes. She's lost her values. She's lost her way. On, and it's time for the church, the sleeping giant that she is, yeah. to quit going along with the flow and stand up and make a difference in the day that we live. Amen. And proclaim that Jesus Christ is the only way. Yes, sir. I told you last week, and I stand by this 100%. Absolutely. The persecution that we will face in the last days for standing for the truth will not just come from the secular world. Right. It will come from the church. Amen. The so-called church. Not the true church, right. but the so-called church. Come on. Because they want you to go along with everybody else's religion. Right. They don't want you to stand and proclaim that homosexuality is an abomination in the sight of God. All right. They don't want you to stand in the pulpit and say that abortion is murder. Yeah. They don't want you to stand and say sin is still sin and right is still right. Exactly. They want everybody to be happy. Yes. They don't want to make nobody upset. Right. They don't want to turn over the apple cart no matter how rotten the apples are. They don't want to turn over the apple cart. So we'll face persecution. 
not just from the world, but from church people. All right. Amen. From what we, Amen. from what are considered leaders today. Oh. Amen. All right. But we can make a difference. It's time for us to take a stand. Amen. Yes. All of the people that we've talked about so far, all of them took a stand in difficult times. Yeah. We're living in difficult times today. Amen. But isn't it whenever the need the need for a light is is the most pressing? Isn't that whenever the need for a, somebody that will stand up and be different, isn't that when the need is the most right. needful? Amen. True. When do you need light the most? When it's dark. When it's dark. Amen. Dark. We need more people instead of getting used to the dark like the McCamies used to say. Yeah. We need more people instead of getting used to the dark. We'll let their light shine Amen. into a world of darkness. True. The lost people. Absolutely. We can make a difference. You don't have to go out here today and everybody that walks by hit them over the head with your Bible. Right. You'd be surprised what showing the love of God will do. Amen. 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 You'll be surprised yes. what letting your light shine. Let Him love yes, through you. Sir. Let Him shine through you. Come on, if you treat people the way that you want to be treated, right. I bet every one of us in here this morning fall short of that. Come on. Right. Amen. Right. I guarantee you this week, Absolutely. we treated somebody in a way that we would not want That's to right. have been treated. Amen. Right. Amen. I guarantee you this week, every one of us, including this preacher, are guilty of not letting our light shine the way that we should have let our Amen. light shine. Absolutely. We are guilty of missing out on an opportunity when we could have showed love. Right. We didn't show any love whatsoever. Amen. Let your light so shine oh, come on. before men. It's not all about you. Right. The sooner we realize that, the better tool and vessel will be for God Amen. to use in His kingdom. That's right. It's not all about you. You can sit around and think about things for you all day long. Exactly. It's about the lost souls that are dying and going to hell. Amen. That's what it's about. If we've ever needed your offerings, we need them now. Yes. If the, if the door, if the opportunity has ever been open for us to take the gospel to the world, the time is now. Amen. If the lost ever needed to hear the real answer, the time right. is now. Right. Amen. Amen. We find other people, and I'm fixing to close, we find other people throughout the Bible that <clears throat> decided to make a difference. The Bible says in Amos, the 7th chapter, the 14th verse, and I'll read this real quick. It said, Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, yeah. neither was I a prophet's son, Come on. but I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. You see, Amos was just a common, ordinary man. Right. He was a farmer. Amen. He was a herdsman. Yeah. He said, And the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. And you know what Amos did? He went. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. He went. I like what Brother Sleeze tried to get out this morning. I can't quote it either, but it's time for you to ask not what God can do for you, yeah. but what you can do for God. Yeah. It's, not, it's time for you to ask not what everybody else can do for me, but what can I do for everybody else? Come on. Amos said, I was just a common, ordinary man. Nobody would have probably picked him. But God did. Amen. You may think today that nobody will choose you. God has. Right. God has chosen you to be His light, to carry His message to a lost and dying world, yes. to let somebody know that Jesus is the only answer, yes. that there is no one. How about Elisha? Whenever he was asked by Elijah, Elijah's getting ready to be took out of here and he turns to Elijah and he says, what would you have me to do for you? Now remember, this question is coming from a man that has raised the dead. Right. He's shut up the skies. Come on. He's opened up the skies. Right. He's called fire down from heaven. Yes. He can do a lot of things. Amen. Selfishness, the selfishness of our old man might have asked for something selfish. Yeah. What's Elisha asked for? A double portion of your spirit. Come on. I want to make a difference too. He had seen Elijah make a difference. Right. You see, you encourage other people to make a difference when you make a difference. Amen. Amen. Right. This Thursday, we're going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. Why? Because a small group of people decided to make a difference. Right. Because a small group of people decided to no longer allow their faith to be suppressed by the government. Because a small group of people decided that they were going to go somewhere where they could worship God the way they wanted to worship God. And guess where they came? America. America. Amen. So that they could worship the way that they wanted to worship. 
So Elijah says, give me a double portion of your spirit. Right. And Elijah's taken it home and his mantle falls and Elisha picks it up and does twice as many miracles as Elijah did. Come on. Not only that, whenever he's, after he's dead, there's still enough power in his bones to raise a dead man. All right. They take a dead man, they throw him into the pit, to the grave, the tomb, where uh, Elisha's bones are at. The dead man touches those bones, jumps up, and runs off, I guess. <laughs> That's what I'd have done. <laughs> Hallelujah. That'd have solved my back problems. I guarantee you, I'd have ran pretty good there. Yes, sir. Elisha chose not something selfish, uh -huh. something that would help others. All right. He chose to be a difference, to make a difference. He chose Amen. to be different. Amen. Come on. He chose. And where did he come from? Did he come from the school of the prophets, Brother Sleeves? No. Elisha was a plowboy. He's behind the oxen, plowing the field. Oh. Elijah walks right past a bunch of hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Elijah walks right past the school of the prophets. No. Well educated men. Mm -hmm. He says, You're it. Come on, plowboy. Yeah. Follow me. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh. I wonder sometimes how many intelligent men God walked past before He picked me. Hallelujah. Praise you can make a difference today. Yes, sir. You can make a difference today. Praise God. I want to close with this. <clears throat> In 1620, a small group of people tired of the oppression. There was about 120 of them when they started out. Mm. Tired of the oppression that the government had put upon their belief and their, their faith in God. They wanted to pray the way they wanted to pray. Yeah. They wanted to worship the way that they wanted to worship. Amen. Somebody might need to deliver that message to the White House. Yes, sir. Amen. True. They all boarded a little ship by the name of the Mayflower and they began to cross over the ocean and the ship was tossed to and fro and it was cold and it was crowded. Yeah. And it was miserable. Come on. For 65 days they sailed and finally they spotted land. They docked there at Plymouth Rock, and that first winter was terrible for them. Amen. The wind blew through the cracks of the Mayflower. It was cold. It was unforgiving. Not much food. Hardly any food whatsoever, and hard to find any because of the weather. Amen. And one of them got sick, and then another one got sick, and then another one got sick, and then another one got sick. Captain Miles Standish and his wife Rose had boarded the ship with the pilgrims. Miles Standish was not a pilgrim. He wasn't even a believer. Not when they started out. All right. But he sat at his wife's bedside during that winter holding her hand what time he could when he wasn't out trying to find something for the others to eat or something to keep them warm by or fighting off the savages. Mm -hmm. He spent as much time as he could by her bedside and History says there were times whenever she was shaking uncontrollably and other times where she just laid there lifeless from the fever. Mm -hmm. By spring, five wives remained out of the 18 that started out on their journey. And Miles Standish's wife was not one of them. He lost her that winter. Mm -hmm. And that fall, they all decided to have a Thanksgiving meal. Their celebration actually lasts three days. I don't believe we can handle that. My goodness. <laughs> don't tell what we wait after that's over <laughs> that fall Captain Miles Standish now think about this a man that was not even a believer whenever they started out on their journey yeah. he joins the pilgrims for the first Thanksgiving to give thanks to God to give thanks to God you might think today well what in the world were they giving thanks to God for there was 120 of them when they started out there was about 47 now <clears throat> all those men that had lost their wives What's, and, and Miles Standish, that wasn't even a believer, what's he doing joining them now? I can tell you what he's doing joining them now. Because throughout that winter, he had become a believer himself. How? Because he had seen those pilgrims bury their loved ones. Yeah. Yet their faith was still unwavering to the God that they served. He had saw them shiver in the cold. He had saw them almost starve to death. Some of them may have starved to death. Right. Yet whenever spring got there, they still held to their faith. Right, amen. Because he saw what this group of people, this group is different. They were different. Yes, sir. They made a difference. Amen. And he joined them for the Thanksgiving meal to give thanks to the Creator because even though he wasn't a believer at first, the faith that he saw in them caused him to be a believer. Right. All right. Are you getting my point today? 
There's a whole world out there today that don't believe. But if they can see the faith that you have in your God, not just when times are going good. It's easy for you to sing praises when you're on the mountaintop. Amen. You ain't showing nobody nothing. It's a great thing to do, but you're not proving anything. Everybody can sing like the birdies whenever it's, everything's going fine. But it's whenever you're freezing to death, whenever you're burying your loved ones, whenever you're starving to death, and you still say, oh God, I thank you. I don't understand it, but I thank you. It's with those times when adversity comes and your light still shines and the devil don't put it out. It's at those times that you make a difference Amen. in other people's lives. Absolutely. Because they've seen you go through things and you still believe. Exactly. Things that would have caused them to say there is no God. Right. Countless numbers of people have looked at the suffering in the world and have decided, well, there is no God. Uh -huh. If there was, He wouldn't allow that. Come on. But these pilgrims, the ones that survived anyway, mm -hmm. got everything in order and had a Thanksgiving celebration to yeah. thank God for the place that He had brought them, even though they had suffered loss. Come on. Even though the old ship had been weather beaten and battered, their faith was still strong in God. Yes. They still believed in their God. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. This is a simple message. Oh yeah. But it's also profound. Yes. In a time of darkness, what is more important than light? Amen. At a time whenever people need hope, what's more important than that they see that you know that hope yes. and that you share that hope with them? Amen. Amen. That you share that hope with them. Right. Like I said, you don't have to take your Bible and beat people over the head or shove it down their throat. If you, I guarantee you, if you'll pray this prayer with me this morning, if you'll say, Father God, open the door this week for me to witness to somebody. Open the door this week for me to be a minister to let my light shine. Amen. I guarantee you, God will hold you to that. Yes, sir. He will send somebody your way he will allow the door to be opened. Then it's up to you to let the light shine into their darkness. Right. Because you can make a difference. Amen. You can make a difference. Yes. I told you last week if we had a whole if we were having a convention and had a whole bunch of people that knew the gospel and knew about Bible history and knew about the church history, I should say. I could ask them who D.L. Moody was and they'd know. They'd say, Yeah, I know who that is. But on the other hand, I could ask them who Edward Kimball is, and they'd say, well, I have no idea. Some yeah. of them, a few of them might know him. Mm. But Edward Kimball's the one that led D.L. Moody to Christ. All right. And I guarantee you, Edward Kimball, who was a Sunday school teacher, just an ordinary man, if you had the chance to ask the great D.L. Moody while he was still with us, if you ask him, a list of the men who influenced him the most or that was most important to him. I guarantee you, if Edward Kimball wasn't on number one spot, he'd be awful close. All right. Because he's the one that decided to make a difference yes. in D.L. Moody's life. Amen. And when he did that, shared the gospel with him, he became born again and became one of the greatest soul winners. Right. One of the greatest soul winners ever. Mm -hmm. You can make a difference in people's lives. Oh. You can make a difference. You can be a light in this hour of darkness. Yes, sir. Someone else have something before we go?